Hola! In this video, we'll discuss two foundational combinational circuits, the half adder and the full adder. When I say foundational, I mean it. These circuits will be building blocks within much larger circuits. Understanding these basic devices will help us understand the larger ones. Longhand addition and unsigned binary can look like this. Here we see two four-bit numbers. In order to add them together, we work column by column from right to left. There are only a handful of possibilities for a sum from any column, as outlined in this box. If all the inputs are zero, the output sum is zero, zero. If just one input is one, the sum is zero, one. If two inputs are one, the sum is one, zero. This is where many people get tripped up. They think one plus one is two. That is certainly correct in decimal, but since we are in binary, that is written as one, zero. And the final possibility is one plus one plus one, which makes a sum of one, one. Now, in these examples, the ones and zeros might be added in different orders, but that doesn't change the sum, thanks to the commutative law. But why do we care about adding three bits together? Isn't this longhand addition between just two given numbers? That is correct, but over the course of adding column by column, we sometimes have carries, but we never need to add more than three bits in any one column. This means that if we can handle adding three individual bits at a time, then we can complete any longhand addition. For this example problem, we begin at the rightmost column and add one plus one. This sums to one zero. That's a two bit result. The leading bit is called the carry bit and the trailing bit is called the sum bit. So we write the carry above the next column and the sum bit as part of the final solution. Now in the second column, we add one plus zero plus one, which equals one zero. Again, the one carries to the next column and the zero comes down as part of the final sum. We repeat this process for the remaining two columns. In unsigned binary, the carry out from the final column is part of the final sum. So with two four bit inputs, we get a five bit sum. This was one specific example problem. It is helpful to see a numeric example, but it is more useful to generalize this symbolically so it can be applied to any given numbers. Here we see the recommended method for it. A is used to represent the augend, and B is used for the addend. S is used for the sum of A plus B. The subscripts next to each symbol indicate the bit position, starting from zero at the least significant bit and increasing by one as we move to the left. To know the weight of each of these bit positions, simply take two and raise it to the subscript value. So for example, a sub three would carry a weight of two to the third or eight. The subscript notation is very useful when interpreting binary sequences as coherent numbers. It clearly states that a three goes together with a two, a one, and a zero. If we happen to decide to name these bits w, x, y, and z, could they still represent a four-bit number? Sure, they could, but that would be more difficult to interpret. When we build circuits, each of these bits will, in reality, be a separate electrical signal. So in one sense, they are all separate inputs. Let's say we're asked the question, how many inputs are there to this addition? One person could answer eight, there's a one and a zero and another zero and a one and so on. Another person could answer two. There are two four bit numbers. Both of them would be correct. As said before in this course, reading numbers is a matter of interpretation. Let's make that interpretation as simple as possible by using a notation like you see here to clearly indicate when binary values should be read as a coherent number. Now that we have established how longhand addition should work, let's build circuits to accomplish that goal. First, we'll design a half adder, which can add together two bits. This can be useful for the rightmost column of addition, where there are no carry ins, and also as a building block for larger circuits. 
Since we already have our purpose and variables defined, the design process moves to a truth table. The output columns were filled in manually based on what binary addition should produce. For example, in the bottom row, 1 plus 1 equals 1, 0. Now we have two output columns. Even though we interpret them as a coherent 2-bit number, they are separate logic signals, so each output variable, C and S, requires its own Boolean equation. To write the equations in SOP form, we look for the ones on the truth table and form a product term that will give us a one with those particular input values. The equation for C is simply C equals A and B. The only time C is true is when both A and B are true. There are two rows where S is true, which leads to the equation S equals A prime B or A B prime. Either B needs to be true or A needs to be true, but not both in order for the output to be true. Wait a sec, that sounds just like exclusive OR logic, and indeed it is. So we can simplify the equation to just S equals A exclusive OR B. Keep an eye out for this pattern. When you see two product terms OR together and the prime swaps variables between them, then you have the definition of exclusive OR. This will make your circuit simpler. In SOP form, you would need five gates. With the exclusive OR, you simply need one gate. Now that the equations are established, we draw the logic circuit. It is a very simple one, as you see here. And now for perhaps the biggest point in this whole course. This circuit has no idea that it is doing addition. These are logic gates, not adding gates, whatever that would be. We establish the purpose of the circuit in this truth table. We set exactly what the logic output should be for every possible input combination, and then we went through the steps of Boolean equations, simplification, and drawing a circuit. We force the logic to do the math for us. Are these numeric values? Yes. Are these logic values? Also, yes. It's all a matter of interpretation. Let's look at this half adder in the simulator. First, at the gate level, we see the same circuit as in the slides, but now with binary switches for the inputs and binary probes for the outputs. How can we make sure this works? Well, we could scan through each row of the truth table, but more meaningful is if we apply the purpose of the circuit in our evaluation of it. This half adder simply adds together two bits. So when we add 0 plus 0, the result should be 0, 0, as seen here on the outputs. 0 plus 1 should be 0, 1. I flip the B value to 1, and the results are what is expected. Similarly, 1 plus 0 equals 0, 1, as you can see here. Finally, 1 plus 1 equals 1, 0. When interpreting the outputs, we must make sure to read them in the correct order, by our definition, C out is the most significant bit, so it should be read first. Always pay attention to the variable names. We can also condense the circuit into a device symbol, as you see here. In this symbol, I decided to place C out above S. That is because, with coherent numbers, they are typically laid out with most significant bit on top. What is inside this device symbol? We can always double click on it to see the underlying circuit. Here, unsurprisingly, are the same gates and variable names as we saw with the switches circuit. It is important to test any device symbol fully, otherwise it can lead to serious headaches down the road. So running through the options here, zero plus zero equals zero. Zero plus one equals one. One plus zero equals one. And finally, 1 plus 1 equals 1, 0. A simple circuit indeed, but this is the same approach that we'll be applying to future circuits.